my wife was pregnant with our second child. We knew it was going to be a boy. Drove my wife to the hospital. I think I got there at about six o'clock, which was just in time because Joshua was born at exactly 7.38 on um, that Monday morning. And when he was born, my reaction was, thank goodness he was a, just a perfect, healthy, beautiful little baby boy. It was about 30 minutes later that things started to go wrong. He had a low temperature, he wasn't breathing properly, he was reluctant to feed. But at the time, we were just reassured, you know, he's a little bit premature, all these things are normal. The next day, it was obvious he was a very poorly baby at that point. He was transferred to Manchester um, by ambulance. The team in Manchester told us, you know, actually the only thing wrong with Joshua is he's, he's had an overwhelming infection and he's suffering from, from, from sepsis. We kept thinking, Joshua is here for that basic lack of care that he could have had in, in the first hour of his life and he wouldn't be here at all. He was actually flown by helicopter um, from Manchester to the Freeman Hospital in Newcastle. And that's when we were advised about um, this treatment called ECMO, basically a heart and lung machine for babies. Unknown at the time, his left lung began to bleed because it was more damaged than anyone realised. And the consultant had a conversation with my wife and I and said, um, look, if we tried this operation, it'll be futile and we, we just worried it will, it will make him suffer more. So on the 5th of November, yeah, we, um, the consultant said he's going to turn the ECMO machine off. And um, he went away. 20 minutes later, he came back and um, we said he's gone, hasn't he? And the consultant nodded his head. <laughs> and um, yeah, Joshua had died. I think the first time, actually, at that point, we'd seen him without all the tubes and all the equipment, and he just looked like the perfect baby boy. Um, we said goodbye to him and, um, and it, yeah, the hardest moment of my life, with, without a doubt, the hardest moment. What I remember thinking was if Joshua's care was this bad, if he had so many obvious signs that he was poorly um, and he was just left until he collapsed, is it just him? Or could this have happened to other babies? What we know is that there were huge discrepancies between what the midwives had reported and what my wife and I remember happening. I'd actually met a number of other families. These are families that had lost babies. It seemed that the pattern of what happened was very, very familiar. So doctors not being called, investigations that covered up what happened. In early 2013, I met the health secretary at the time, Jeremy Hunt. He agreed to hold an independent investigation and it found a lethal mix of failures. And the words in the report were that we have no doubt led to the preventable death of, of mothers and babies. And they found that 16 babies and three mothers had died following poor care. And of those, 11 would have almost certainly survived with the right care. And the tragedy, really, for me, is six of those baby deaths happened after Joshua died. The whole management of the trust for years and years, denying that there were any problems, using statistics to paint a picture of a very safe maternity unit. They described that as um, an ongoing cover-up. And this became the headlines in England for over a week. There's no doubt to my mind that those records didn't vanish by accident. Somebody took those medical records and made a decision that it was better to get rid of them than to present the evidence. My reflection very much was, why didn't they learn from this? And you realise that we've got the culture wrong in healthcare. We just make it too hard for people to admit to ordinary human error. Whereas things like the airline industry, the oil industry, the nuclear industry, they have all learned that they need to make it easy for people to admit when they made a mistake so that they can then develop the systems 
that prevent those mistakes being repeated. And there's a real danger, I think, of um, people using high-level data to misrepresent and, and, and using data for assurance rather than actually what can we learn from this. Because if you don't quantify the problem, we won't get action to change it. And we've got to have that honesty and that candour um, to address problems. I wish I could turn back the clock. I can't do that, I can't change things for him. But um, I do think his life hasn't been in vain. And I think there is a, a legacy for him and hopefully that legacy is safe for maternity care. And I think he's played a small part in helping that happen.